Hi, I'm Jen. And I'm Camille from Tampa Deja Vu. Home to thousands of beautiful women. And the three ugly ones. Tonight we are so lucky to sit down with our feature, Carmen Hart. We're going to dive into some of the juiciest details about Carmen's personal life and find out what really gets her hot. So Carmen, we are so excited to have you here in Tampa. Have you been enjoying yourself? I always have fun in Florida. It's sunny, beautiful ladies, bunch of nakedness. Doesn't get any better than that. So tell us where you're from, Carmen. I am from a small hole-in-the-wall town in North Carolina. I know what you're about to ask me now. <laughs> what What's up with the accent? And, I mean, you don't look like you're from this small town. Now, when people ask me about my accent, there's, there's some things that, you know, usually no one thinks of. An accent is not your ethnicity. It's not what you look like. African Americans live in London and have accents. So you can't say that you look Spanish or you look like a Native American and you should speak a certain way because in all honesty, that's just ignorant on a person's part. An accent is a laziness, a country accent is a laziness in speech. When I was in pageants, I took dialect classes that all they did was teach me how to enunciate my words properly take my time to speak and I didn't sound country at all. Now, if you ask me to do that now, I could probably do it a little bit, but not very good. The movie Carmen Goes South that I did, um, I actually don't have an accent in that movie. It was a movie about me where a fan won a day with me and I actually go to the South where they're all country hicks and they're all Southern speaking crazy and I'm like a diva with a proper Hollywood type accent. So I was able to turn it off, speak properly and make it sound different, but it was only because I had been taught before how to speak properly. It's only because when we grow up, we don't, we say them with a D instead of them. And if we took our time to think about what we would say, it wouldn't sound so countrified. But I really don't care because the countryness is what makes me money. And so, it's cute. It's exactly, and it's super. Fans definitely like it. It's super it cute. Super cute. The county that I'm from is the biggest county in North Carolina. There are 100 counties there, and it's full of Native Americans, and we all speak this way. It does make us sound a little ignorant to some people, and it's only because we're not we're not taught to speak the right way, so we're just lazy about how we should talk. But if you go anywhere else, it's not about really geography, like. Every time someone asks me where I'm from, that they'll go, where are you from, Texas? And I'm like, no, how about the next time you just ask me, where are you from, you ignorant mother trucker? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the dumbass. Just ask me where I'm from. No, I'm not from Texas. And, I, and sometimes I'll gamble with them. I'm like, I'll give you three guesses. I'll give you three guesses, and I'll give you a picture for free. And then they're like, Texas. Kentucky, Louisiana, I'm like, no, you dumbass, now get out of my VIP. You know what I mean? Like, it's not technically geography, and it's definitely not ethnicity. It's not who you are. Like, you could have a Spanish background and grow up in New York and have a New York accent. So the only reason why I speak the way that I do is because where I grew up, we weren't taught to speak the right way. That's it. So what is your nationality? I am full-blooded Native American Lumbee. Lumbee. What is Lumbee? It's a Native American tribe. <laughs> well, obviously, that lot there's of people, like different... Well, that's what it is. See, <laughs> you can't say, what is Cherokee? Would someone ever say that? Well, if you said, what is Cherokee? Would you, if I said Cherokee, would you say, what is Cherokee? No. And the reason why that is, is because, here again, the United States, people here are very ignorant about these things. Everyone just assumes that Native Americans are all effing Cherokee. There are hundreds and hundreds of tribes. And it offends us when, and no offense to anyone that might be Cherokee in this room or anything, but it offends us when I say I'm Native American and I'm full-blooded. Yes, we do exist. We are here. It offends me when I go, I'm Native American, and they're like, so am I. And I'm like, let me guess. You're part Cherokee. And they're like, yeah. 
And I'm like, so is everybody else in the fucking world. Like, we're sitting there going, people just want to be a part of something that they're not. It's such an old school thing that they only think that the, the Cherokees are the most talked about tribe. They're the most popular, well-known group of people. There are Cherokees all around the U.S. where I grew up was Lumbee Indians. There's about 60,000 people in my tribe, Halawasa Pony and the Tuscarora Nation. Like they don't, they only know what they hear and see on TV. So it, it kind of offends us because I'm sitting there going, yeah, you're one millionth percentage of Cherokee because that's all you know. Now prove it. And then I say Lumbee in all due respect and you said, what is Lumbee? Lumbee is a tribe, so is hundreds of other tribes. So it just, people, it's only because they're not as educated as they should be on it. Well, what I was trying to get to is like, what makes it so different? What makes like, it different? Yeah. It's just, it's just a background. Like it's just, it's hard to explain. It's a different group of people. We have a different language. We have different, like a mo majority of the Native American beliefs are almost similar. But with our heritage, there are a few things that are a little different, like peyote, you know, it's legal some places, it's not legal others. Some Indians use it in ceremonies, some don't. We use a lot of sage in our ceremonies quite ritually. We believe in, like I used to do an Indian show and I stopped because my tribe thought it was like deathly disrespectful and I had an Indian headdress made and the only thing about it is it's like in our culture with Lumbee Indians it's disrespectful to put a headdress on the ground so when I would do my show I would have to hand it off to someone and they'd have to hold it and put it away it ended up getting stolen and then when they found out that I was doing the show it was a problem so I stopped doing it like some tribes, they don't give a rat's ass what you do. Some of them love it. Like, our cultures are just very different. Not not even very different, just different altogether. How did your parents feel about you doing this kind of environment? Well, hmm. how my mom find, found out I was in porn, because my mom and my dad were the only two people in the world that didn't know. As far as they were concerned, I went to California to sign a big contract for modeling. And I gradually, I did it really smart. Like I gradually started telling them a little bit more about what I was doing. So I was like, I'm competing in a bikini contest. And I'm like, I'm doing these shows. They want to put me on a billboard. I just won $10,000 in a big contest. Like they were proud that I was doing all this kind of stuff. So. The more proud that they were of me, the more I could like slip in a little more stuff. So then I was like, well, I'm doing this dance contest, but in the end, I kind of have to pop the top. It's going to be like a Playboy style thing. And I told my mom, you know, I was like, but don't tell daddy. You know, you don't have to tell him <laughs> that I'm getting naked. She ended up telling him like three days later and he, he just, he was more hurt than anything else, but they still didn't know about the porn. My mom and dad came to visit me in California, and I had to work one day, literally go make my AVN award-winning movie, Fuck, my parents were in town. When I was making that film, I just left them at home. I was like, I can't cancel this job. I need to do it today. I left, and she wanted to watch movies in my bedroom, and she went through, which I didn't think she would like, like go through my movie collection. I thought it would just be sitting there, and she saw my DVDs on the shelf and like pulled it out and was like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and then I come home and she's like, let's just say I won't go in your room looking for socks anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, oh no. I'm like, whatever you do, just don't tell daddy. So the only person that doesn't know that I was ever a porn star is my dad. Still Not know. that he still doesn't know. Wow. But they do know that I travel all over the world doing these big showgirl shows. I make good money. I'm very well known for what I do. I've won a lot of awards. I'm the best. I can honestly say with like confidence that I'm the best feature entertainer because 
I got that award and I worked really hard for it so I can say that so they know that and actually when I got nominated and I performed at the Hard Rock Casino in Vegas on the stage at the joint where Bruce Springsteen and Poison and other great rock and roll legends have played I'm able to say that I was on that stage and I did a show and when I got nominated for Entertainer of the Year they were actually going to come out and support me and see my show because you can't get naked up there you only got down to like under pieces so they don't care about what I do now they love me because it hasn't changed who I am as long as it never changes me then they don't care what I do but he is the only one that doesn't know I've done the porn <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure my dad would murder me if he ever found out I ever did but if he's your dad and he truly loves you then who cares if you're still you that's the way I look at it you know if I'm still me and I still love my parents to death and I'm not you know a crackhead living in the streets or taking that money and blowing it off somewhere or just being dirty and filthy and and flaunting it in front of them and their friends or embarrassing them in any way then who really cares what you do I mean really who cares? And it's legitimate. First of all, it's legal. There are tons of people that do illegal shit worse than I do, like doing this job, that never get judged for what they do. It's just a matter of what people think is okay. Who cares what you think? You know, we're more clean than anybody else in the world that has sex without condoms or never gets tested. We were getting tested every 30 days. Who can you say can produce a test that says, I don't have chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, or HIV. What about you? You know, nobody could say that every, every 30 days. People look at porn like it's just filthy and nasty because we're letting the world see what we're doing. That's only a matter of being shy or not. So we're not shy. You have sex. You have sex. I have sex. I just do it where people can see it and I do it a lot more cleaner than anybody else. So that's a whole nother way to look at the porn world and people don't, people don't get it.